In this video, we're gonna install Python via Anaconda, and we're also gonna connect it to Git Bash. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. First things first, I'm gonna load up Git Bash real quick because we need Bash in order to go ahead and install Python onto our system. And just to double check that I don't have Python installed already, I can type in Python dash dash version, and we see Python command not found, and that's a good sign saying that Python's not installed, because if Python was installed, it would say something about a version and give us some more information. So I'm gonna move this over here for the time being. All right, so there's a couple ways you could install Python on your system. You could come to python.org, download it, and basically go through the process instructions here uh, to add Python to your system. However, we're gonna install the Anaconda distribution, and I'm gonna get it started downloading real quick because it's kind of a big file, and uh, so that way we're not waiting all day, and then I'll talk a little bit about it. So I want the latest version, and of course, make sure you're on the correct operating system. This video is for Windows, so I'm selecting the Windows option and I want Python 3.7 version and I'm going with the 64-bit graphical installer and if you don't know which version of Windows you have 64-bit or 32-bit and come down to your search search for a computer and you'll see this PC down here right click on it hit properties and you'll see what type of operating system you have or I can see I have 64-bit most systems are 64-bit so that's likely what you have but I'll go ahead and download it and I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. All right, so the difference between Anaconda here versus just Python is Anaconda is a package of a bunch of different add-ons basically that come along with Python. So it installs Python plus the option to download and install a bunch of different uh, plugins, I guess, packages. So over 1,500 Python data science packages. So we got like Jupyter, NumPy, Pandas, TensorFlow, and those are the ones that I've heard of. Again, I'm pretty new to this whole developing data science world. Uh, so I imagine we're gonna cover a bunch of these later on in the future, but basically the Anaconda distribution comes like pre-configured to easily deploy these other options and functions and features. So that's why we're going with this distribution instead of just getting regular old Python. All right, so we've gone ahead and downloaded it. Downloaded it, did it. All right, I don't really have a stutter, but sometimes it's fun to add an extra it did it to things. So go ahead and open it. All right, so we got next. I'm gonna go ahead and agree, and I'll just go with install for just me, and we'll leave my directory as the default. And you see it's pretty big, almost three gigabytes here, and that's because it comes with all this extra stuff. All right, so next. All right, now we got advanced options. Um, one thing that I've come to find is you need to check this option unless you know what you're doing. Uh, even though it says it's not recommended and they recommend you add it like manually to your paths because if you, you uninstall or reinstall it, uh, Python or Anaconda, it could cause problems. However, I could not get it to work unless I checked this option. So. I, I rec if you're new and you're just getting started, I recommend doing this option. And if you have trouble with it later on, we can cross that bridge when we get to it. And definitely register Anaconda as my default Python 3.7. So yeah, I would tick this box if you don't know what you're doing otherwise. Because otherwise, you might have some problems. All right, so it's finished installing now and it recommends that I go and get an IDE. And I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm going to click next and then learn more about Anaconda Cloud, learn how to get started with Anaconda. Not going to worry about that. Hit finish and boom. Just like that, we've installed the Anaconda distribution. Now let's come back over to Git Bash and I'm going to open a new version here. Git Bash. And now I'm going to type in Python version. And there we go. Now we see that we have Python version 3.7.4 installed on the system. You can also double check Conda as well, version. All right, so we've made some good progress here and now there's like a few more steps so that way we can set up Python to run like automatically out of Git Bash here so we can run the Python commands and all that type of stuff right out of here. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up a bash RC file which basically sets those defaults. So first things first, we wanna do 
make sure we're in our home directory. To do that, you just type in CD and I'm already in my home directory. So that is good. Up next, we wanna go ahead and do, and I'm gonna put these directions down below as well so you can read them and double check what you're doing. We're gonna type in PWD, which is going to give us the directory path. So I might wanna go ahead and actually copy this. All right, so there we go, there's my path. And then we gotta figure out where Anaconda is located. So to do that, I'm gonna type in ls, and boom, it shows all of the directories and files in this particular folder. And we see right here, we have Anaconda 3 up above. So open my little notepad file and do Anaconda 3, because we're gonna need that in just a minute here. Now what I wanna do is type in this really long command so, which looks like this right here. We type an echo, uh, comma, or apostrophe. Sorry, I don't know my, my symbols. Export path equals to quotes, dollar sign path, and then your path here. So mine is that forward slash C, u, user sick n, Anaconda three colon and then path again C users sick n Anaconda three and then scripts quotes apostrophe space carrot carrot I think that's carrot less than greater than greater than greater than space dot b a s h r c enter all right cool so what this does is basically tells git bash where to go to load anaconda and python scripts so it can read that those languages and now we're going to add another line to our bash rc file it's going to be echo echo alias python equals two when the python dot exe quote apostrophe greater than greater than dot bash rc enter all right cool and now we're essentially going to reboot our bash file by doing source bash rc and sweet so now if i type in python something should pop up and here we go, so now we have Python 3.7.4, so there's our version, and now we're in the Python interpreter, which is in a conda environment, and yada, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter right now, not important. The important part is now we can go ahead and type in Python commands here if we want to. So I could do like print, hello, and boom, just like that, I can run Python right here from git bash. So we're making good progress, so I was thinking about it and I should show you how to actually exit the Python mode. Uh, so if you wanna go back into the console mode, like you can't do regular console stuff in here, like if you type CD to go to your root directory, like you're gonna get an error message because it's expecting you to type in Python commands right now. So if you're done doing Python stuff, you can do exit with the parentheses, enter, and then boom, you're back to your regular command line and you can do regular shell Unix type stuff. And that's all I wanted to cover in this video. So if you found this video to be helpful to you, please go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, all that type of stuff. And I hope you have a great day.